Sunday, 2022. Thank you so much. Welcome, La Casa family. It's me, Connor, and thanks for staying connected. On behalf of myself and everyone else here at La Casa de Cristo, happy Mother's Day weekend. 
We're so happy that you're here, and we are thrilled to be able to celebrate all of the influential and loving mothers and mother figures in our lives. As we spend this weekend celebrating Mother's Day, I want to let everybody know of an upcoming event in our women's ministry. Even though the summertime heat is rolling in for us Arizona folk, spring is still in the air here at La Casa because our annual women's spring tea event is happening on May 14th in the Gathering Place. We're inviting all of the women in our congregation and encouraging them to invite any inspirational and important women in their own lives to attend this event that will have a guest speaker, Tracy Steele, as we discuss the Word of God and exploring our faith from a woman's perspective. Please go to lacostadecristo.com slash women to sign up or to volunteer and to find out more. We can't wait to see you there. So while our women's ministry gets to enjoy the last bit of spring before things get too hot, the rest of us can look ahead to the summertime because VBX is almost here. On the week of July 11th to the 15th, children can come to our VBX and enjoy this year's circus theme in what we're calling God's Great Show. And let me tell you, there are so many things to look forward to. Games, crafts, music, plenty of snacks, you don't want to miss it. Please go to lacostadecristo.com slash VBX to find out more and to sign up or to volunteer. I'm going to be there, and I would love to see how many people can turn out to help make this the greatest experience for these kids possible. We definitely need volunteers. Thanks for being with us today, La Casa, and now let's get ready to worship. On this Mother's Day, we welcome you, and we invite you to stand for our gathering hymn. Welcome you to worship at La Casa de Cristo on this Mother's Day, and we begin our service as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ. Scripture tells us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of quiet for self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and he bendest gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. seated at this time. We share in a very special time this morning with our children's choir.
Let's hear it again for our children's choir. Why don't you guys sit down? Have a seat. And we also want to thank Rachel Stoddard and Dr. Jeremy Peterman for their leadership in our children's choir. Let's give them a hand as well. So this morning, I want you guys to take a look. Whoops, we got a little cord there. All right, we're all good. All right. So this morning, um, we have celebrated our moms and we've shared in that together. I want you to do something very special with me. On the count of three, we're all gonna say together, I love you, mom, all right? So one, two, three, I love you, mom. All right, that's a good job. So we also have a lot of ways we're celebrating our moms uh, this morning as well outside. So everyone, kids of all ages, can go out and take one of our flower forks and you can write in honor or memory of your mom and can plant that in our flower garden. We also have a photo booth out there, okay? And you can take a photo together as a family or wherever you wanna go and that together. And also in addition to the photo booth and the flowers, every woman who is here will get a flower because whether you're a mom or not, We've all had a mom or someone who's acted like a mom in our life, and so we appreciate that and share in that special time together. You guys did a great job today, and we appreciate you. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the voices of children. We thank you for the voices of our moms. And we thank you as we gather on this day that we can celebrate in love, the love that you first given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for being here, and you can head back, and as they head back, we can all share and move out of our pews, share God's peace with one another. to break up this party, uh, but the party can continue outside after our service, and uh, it's great to have you all here today, and at this time in our service, we'll invite you to be seated as we share in word in song. For the ends of being an ideal grace I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight
I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. How do I love thee? We thank our musicians for that beautiful piece on this Mother's Day. At this time, we're delighted, as we have at all four of our worship services this weekend, to welcome new members into our midst. So I'm going to invite forward at this time David McGann and also Lori Bauer and her son Steve. And if they would come up and join me up here on uh, the chancel area, don't be bashful, come on up. Uh, and uh, we'll have you sharing that together. It's a little long walk from the back, so come on up, guys. And as they're coming up, uh, we want to make sure that you put your, uh, look at your insert for our new members. We actually have another nine new members who went through our class, but because they were traveling this weekend to visit their moms or grandmas, couldn't join us today, so they'll be joining us at a future date, um, and we'll welcome them as well. But read their bios so that you can welcome them into our life together. Come on up here. All right, and we just want to share in a couple moments. Uh, we're going to ask a few questions here. So David McGann is here. Now, David, is it true that you first found us online? Is that yes. correct? Okay, so you started watching us online, and then you decided to come visit us in person. Yes. Awesome. And you moved here from Atlanta. Do you yes. prefer dry heat or humidity? Dry heat. Dry heat all the way. Okay, <laughs> you're in the right place then, okay. And Lori and Steve, you've come to us from Washington State, which is a lot wetter and a lot cooler. Now, have you lived through a summer here yet? Not yet. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll check in with you uh, in a couple months and see how things are going. But we, we welcome both of you and we're grateful for you in our midst. At this time, we'd like to ask you, is it your desire to join La Casa de Cristo along with these other new members and also all of us who serve here as members and friends of the church to work for the kingdom of God on earth and to serve Jesus Christ? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. And will all of you here this morning continue to support these new members and all of our members as together we strive for justice and peace in all the earth, serving with our Lord Jesus Christ and proclaiming the good news to all? If so, would you answer, yes, by the help of God? Yes. Let's pray for our new members today. Almighty God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all good gifts which come from your hand, and we give you thanks for these new members that join us. We thank you for them coming to us here at La Casa de Cristo, and may all of us continue to work to share the good news of the gospel in this city and this state and this nation and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's give them all a La Casa welcome this morning. Congratulations, guys.
Congratulations. Congratulations. Good. You can go on now. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you so much. Watch, be careful on those steps. And uh, as we uh, gather this morning, we continue our worship. We'll ask you to stand for our gospel acclamation. According to St. Matthew, the 23rd chapter. The background of this text is Jesus has already entered Jerusalem. He is in his final week, but now he speaks to the people of Jerusalem about how they are not listening to God. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. seated for our hymn of the day. Peace to you from God, who is our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who also gives us the promised presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We celebrate this Mother's Day here at La Casa de Cristo, and as we share during the children's message, it is our hope and prayer that you'll take a few moments before you get on with your day to go out to the courtyard to remember your moms in the flower garden, to receive a flower if you're a woman here with us today, and also to spend some time at the photo booth. We are grateful for the gift of our mothers and grandmothers on this day. And as I prepared for the sermon for this week, my thoughts went back to some important words that I once heard from my own mother. Now, I know it may not seem like it, but the very first time I ever spoke in public in eighth grade, I was absolutely terrified. It was a debate that would take place in our eighth grade class. It was a presidential election year, and my mom could tell as I got ready for school that I was very, very nervous. But she spoke these four very important words to me that I will never forget. I believe in you. I believe in you. As we come on this day, and as I remember, my mom from seven years ago since she went home with Jesus. As we come on this day, we recognize those important words 
from our mothers. We recognize those words, whether they're here with us here on earth or whether they have gone home to Jesus in heaven. Now, I have to be honest with you today. You all know that I was a perfect child and never got into any trouble, but I loved to talk as a child, so there were other times that I heard words from my mother that were a little stern a sterner and a little more of a disciplinarian. Uh, you know, if I heard these words, you know me as Pastor Jeff or as Pastor Ruby, but if I heard these words in a loud voice from my mother, Jeffrey Charles Ruby, then I knew that I had committed a sin of omission or commission. I had either failed to do something or I had done something that I shouldn't be doing. And you know, as we come on this day, we think of those important words from our moms and from our grandmas. We think of words of affirmation. We think of the importance of words and listening. But the question may arise, as important and as affirming as those words are from parents or grandparents, how might we hear God? How might we hear God affirming us in our life? That's really the gospel that we heard on this day. That's really the gospel that we heard because in the gospel, Jesus has already arrived in Jerusalem. He's already arrived there. And yet the people of Jerusalem are not listening to him. In fact, he will be put on a cross in a few days. So Jesus uses a feminine image for God. He says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long I would come and protect you and comfort you as a hen gathers her chicks, as a hen puts her wings over her chicks, but you have refused to listen to me. Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who have been sent to you. And you know, as we think about that, and as we think about those words of Jesus, the question might be, Jerusalem didn't listen to Jesus, obviously, because they put him to death. We put him to death too. So how might we listen to God in our life? Well, on this Mother's Day, I think that uh, we all recall that one of the ways in which our moms often spoke to us was in the midst of ordinary days or ordinary ways. And that's a clue for us about how we might hear God in our everyday life. How we might hear God in our everyday life. If you think that God is only going to speak to you between 9.15 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. on Sunday morning here in the sanctuary, then you're sadly mistaken and you've limited God in your life. It is often in those humdrum ordinary days at work, at home, at school, that God speaks to you and to me. And, and sometimes when we hear him in our life, we mistake him for someone or something else. Maybe we're not even always aware of us, but it's in those ordinary moments that God speaks to us. And maybe you say, well, pastor, how can that be? How can God come to us in the midst? Well, look at how God worked in the scriptures. Look at how he worked in the people of the scriptures when he called them. When God called Ruth, she was on a lonely desert road. It was in the middle of an ordinary day of travel. When God called Peter, he was down by the fishing docks. When God called Matthew, he was working for the Judean Revenue Service, working as a tax collector. When God called Esther, he used her cousin Mordecai to speak to her and help her to save her people. When God came to Nathanael, he was under a fig tree. God always comes to us in the midst of the ordinary and the everyday. So if your question is, how do you hear God in your life, then maybe that's the first clue. I think we've all had those times in life where we wished, you know, we're facing an important choice or we're facing this big fork in the road in our life, and we wish God would just somehow come down from heaven and speak to us clearly, or, or maybe Maybe it's a bunch of little things that is making us crazy in life, and we just wish that God would clarify everything for us. But the first thing we need to see is God can and will come in our life, but only if we're open to him coming in the midst of the ordinary and every day. That's first. And then this is second. God will often come to us at a time of great upheaval and change 
in our life. God will often come to us at a time of great upheaval and change in our life. We've all been through that the past two years together, a time of great upheaval, a time of great change. And yet if we stop and we listen, we will hear God speaking to us. Viktor Frankl was interned in Hitler's concentration camps and he survived them. And he later wrote in one of his books what he learned in the concentration camps. And he said, you know, he said, what I learned there was this, I had absolutely no control over my life. I had absolutely no control over anything in my life, except, he said, except how I chose to respond to my circumstances through God, except how I chose to respond to those circumstances through God. When we know that, when we understand that, then we can put down our false fronts and our facades and understand that while we like to think we have the illusion of control in our life, there is very little we are actually in control of. And when we know that, when we understand that, then we can listen for that voice of God in our life. On our Mother's Day celebration today, we are also celebrating our life as a congregation. You see in your bulletin today a pledge card for our building fund, and we hope you'll take that home with you, pray about it, and then commit to give and pledge either electronically or through the card. You might note that on that card it says we are a church without walls. And we know that for many of you over the past couple of years, this church has been an oasis for you. And, and it has been a place where you can come and gather and we continue to pour ourselves out to the world, to our nation, to our city, whether it's packing boxes of food for people around the world or helping people right in our own city, whether it's your generosity, which has given $120,000 to Lutheran disaster response to help the people in the U.S. Ukraine, or whether it's the ways in which we serve and volunteer here, we are a church without walls. And we, through the building fund, pay our $8 million mortgage. We do our upkeep on this beautiful campus, and many of you speak often about how beautiful this campus is. That's what our building fund is for. So we invite you during this time of upheaval and change to continue to commit to La Casa de Cristo being a church without walls. If you're asking how you might hear God, if you're asking how you might hear him, understand he comes in ordinary days, in ordinary ways, and understand he often comes in times of great upheaval and change, but perhaps the third point is the most important this morning. And that is if you're asking the question, how do you hear and listen to God in your life? It takes spiritual discipline. It takes spiritual discipline. Now, in our world, the word discipline is often not a word in favor. There's a famous Navy SEAL who says discipline is freedom. And he makes the point that anything in life takes discipline, and you also have to know what you need to be disciplined about. You would not want me to go to the organ console this morning and play at the organ. I've not been trained in that discipline. You wouldn't want me to do brain surgery on you. I've not been trained in the discipline of medicine. You wouldn't want to drive over a bridge that I had engineered because I am not an engineer and I haven't been disciplined in that. But why is it that we can understand that in life? We can understand discipline is needed to exercise, to stay healthy, or to watch our diet, to watch our weight, that we can understand all those things. But when it comes to spiritual discipline, we believe listening to God is as simple as pushing a button on our phone or pushing a button on our car radio. You see, we have to wait upon God, be patient, and listen for Him. And amidst all the cacophony of the many voices in our life, the many voices in social media, His voice can be easily drowned out if we do not listen to Him. Martin Buber tells a powerful story of a Jewish rabbi in Kotzak, Poland, 
The rabbi was a famous rabbi many centuries ago named Mendel. And a man came up to him once and said, Rabbi, he said, I would like to know how I listen for God in my life. I would like to know how I hear God in my everyday life. And the famous Rabbi Mendel was going to answer him. And then he chose not to. And he waited for three hours in silence until he answered the man's question because he believed he had to wait upon God and listen to him before he could respond. You see, in your life and in mine, oftentimes we're wanting to go in all sorts of different directions and we don't often think about spiritually the direction we need to go. We need that spiritual discipline, that time of quiet, that time of waiting upon God. And maybe if you're not hearing God in your life, maybe the problem is you're not listening. Maybe the problem is I'm not listening. Maybe the problem isn't God. Maybe the problem is us. There's a story told of a man in New York City who was looking for a Lyft ride or an Uber ride and all the Lyfts and all the Ubers were busy. So finally he found a taxi and he jumped into the taxi and he said to the man, step on it, I'm late. And they had driven for a few minutes and the man said to the taxi driver, he said, are we there yet? And the man says, I don't know, you haven't told me where we're going. <laughs> and the reality is when we ask those sorts of questions in our life, where are we at in our life now? Where are we going? Who are we? What does it matter? That it means that once again, we need to listen for the voice of God in our life. We are blessed this day to recall the words of our moms. Whether they're here with us on earth or whether they're in heaven, we are blessed to hear and have those words. But those words are also a reflection of the love of Jesus Christ. And to answer the question, how might one hear God, look for him in ordinary day. Look for him in times of great upheaval and change, but mostly be disciplined and wait upon the Lord. Amen. We worship this morning with our morning offering, and as our offering is received by our ushers, we'll also have our musical offering. Of course, you are also invited to give electronically as you are able.
We'll invite you to please stand as we share in our statement of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as shown on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in the grave. He is Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks on this day for our moms. Whether they are here on earth with us or whether they are with you in heaven, we give you thanks for them in our lives and all who have acted in a mother-like fashion. We give you thanks for the gift of love. We give you thanks for the gift of family. We also acknowledge on this day, O oh God, it is a difficult day for many, for those who wish to be moms but cannot be, and also for those who may have had a difficult relationship with their mothers. So help us to also understand and honor that and the difficulty for some on this day. As we gather on this day, Almighty God, we continue to pour out into our community, into our world. Help us to continue to be a church without walls. We thank you for our new members that join us in our services this weekend, and we ask that you would strengthen them and all of us as we continue to serve in our community. As we gather this day, Almighty God, we also lift up to you the fact that there are many in our community in need of care and also in need of prayer. We lift up to you those who are anticipating surgery, Greg Hansen and Nancy Berry. We lift up to you those who are hospitalized, Jay Faraci and Diane Medina. We also lift up to you those who are recuperating at home, Carrie Bacala and also Arlene Grebe, Pat Snyder and also Don Martin. We lift up to you all of them and we pray for your healing hand. Almighty God, we have many in our midst also who continue their journey with cancer. And so we lift them up to you and ask we surround them with your healing hand. We lift up to you Lynn and Sue and Peter and Carl and Al and Matt and Thomas and Teresa, Jay and Carl and Myron and Jean. We lift up to you Alice and Steve and Sue, Ellen and Char. We lift up to you Dave and Chad, Richard and Linda and Roger, Tina and Karen and Paul. We lift up to you Shar and Lisa. We lift up to you Mike and Dave. We also lift up to you Marvin and Vern, Dan and Paul, Sheila, Nancy and Dean. Surround them all with your care and your healing hand. For those who continue in hospice care, we lift up to you Vi Marine, Donna Wheeldryer and Joan Cross. Surround them with your light and promise. And we also lift up to you those who claim the Easter promise. We lift up to you Jean Marklin in the death of her husband, Pastor Arnie Marklin, and also Brenda Rodenberger in the death of her mother. Surround them with your light and with your love. And now, Almighty God, we come to you and pray not as we should, but only as we are able, and we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, On earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same our day and our day. As we forgive those who trespass against us. It is the time of temptation. Deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Before we share in the benediction today, we share in our mutual sorrows together and also our mutual joys. We will celebrate the life of Pastor Arnie Marklin, a retired pastor and member of our congregation, and we will celebrate his life here in the sanctuary tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. The congregation is invited to that. 
Also, celebrate today as we gather on this special day for our moms. Take the time in the courtyard, receive your flowers, share in the flower garden that is out there and also the family photo booth, and let us truly celebrate our moms and grandmas on this day. And now, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to smile upon us and may he grant us his favor and peace. May the Lord look upon us with his love now and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. Amen.